aroma, an acceptable sacrifice. Notice this, well pleasing to who? God. What what are we seeing that as they gave to Paul, as they distributed to Paul, they sowed seed into Paul's ministry. God was accounting it. God saw it as an act of worship to Him. Amen. So we need to see our our giving as an act of respect, honor, and devotion to God. So it's not just, we're not, and again, sometimes we can just get in this routine of giving. Well, it's time for the offering, and we just drop our money in the bucket, not really understanding, this is my act of worship. This is, this is an act of worship that I'm having towards God today. I'm expressing my devotion to Him in my giving. Amen. So we see here that this to me clearly tells us that giving is an act of worship. Go with me to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. I have to say, you know, uh, that is a transition. What Paul said, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. On a pastoral level, that, that is a shift that I, that I have had to make. Because, you know, when you're running a ministry, oftentimes you're very aware of needs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you've got bills to pay, all these type of things that need to go on. And, and in many ways, you're, you're dependent upon, even as Paul was, notice in the context, he said, I'm full having received the things sent from you. Now understand, if they don't send the things to him, he's not what? Full. What, what does that mean? He doesn't have supply. So you under, need to understand that God doesn't send money from heaven. All the money and all the supply is already in the earth. It's in the possession of human beings. And if he can't get it through you, he ha won't be able to get it to us. Does that make sense? So on a pastoral level, I have to be quite honest, and I'm sure Kim would agree that uh, the temptation is to, rather than seek the fruit that abounds to your account, the temptation is to seek the gift. I'm just being honest. The temptation is to be seeking what you have somehow to bless us, which, understand, that is the way it's supposed to work, but Paul says that he didn't see, he wasn't seeking the gift, but he was seeking, seeking the fruit that abounds to their account. And understand, that's, that's the right mindset. That's the right mindset. And so I have to say that I've, I've had to make adjustments over the years uh, in getting my thinking right. Amen? Praise God. I'm just being, just being real, keeping it real. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Mark chapter 12, let's look at verse 41. Remember now I said God is legalistic or he's a legalist. He's a great accountant. Why, is he got a, why, does, why would you say God has to be a great accountant? Let me answer the question for you. Because he abides by his word. He, he's the one who instituted the idea of seed time and harvest. And so if you're going to by faith sow seed, it's his job to make sure that you get a harvest. It's your job to be in faith for it, but it's his job to make sure you, he, the harvest is produced for you. Amen? And so he's very, very intent in making sure he abides by his own word. Now I want you to notice, I'm, I'm making reference to this, and I want you to notice this in verse 41 of Mark chapter 12. It says, Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury, and saw how the people put money into the treasury. Amen. So where is Jesus sitting? He's sitting opposite where people are giving, and he's, he's watching not how as far as in the manner that they give, how is in relationship to how much. We'll see that in the context here. Why? 
Why is Jesus? Now remember now, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Isn't that right? So as we're seeing Jesus sit there, watch how much people gave, what can we know? That the Father is watching how much you give. Right? Now, that, now understand, that's not to be a heavy. Sometimes we're thinking, oh, that's such a heavy, you know. No, no. no. It should be good news for you who are givers. Because he, he's, he's going, he's going, whoo, glory to God, they're giving. Now, I get to abide by my word. I get to make sure that they get a harvest. Amen? Yes. So it, it's, it, Jesus isn't sitting there go, scowling and going, look at those no good for nothing. No, no. No, that's not how God is. God's, God's saying, I need to abide by my word. I, I'm very, he, God's very intent in abiding by his word. And we need to in, be intent in not necessarily holding God to his word as if he wasn't going to do it, but being in faith for him to abide by his word. Amen. Trusting that he will do exactly what he says. Now, Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. So now we know that how is not in reference to the, the manner in which they give. It was how much they give. So many were, who were rich put in much. That's a good thing, isn't it? Right? So again, let's, let's, these people obviously were in rich toward God. Right? Because they're giving. They had something came into their possession and now they're giving. We also know this, that they're also, they're, what they're doing is an act of worship. They're showing respect, honor, and devotion for God in their giving. These rich people were worshipers. Yes, they were. But notice this. It goes on to say in verse 42, Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites which make a quadrant, which, the, again, two mites, it just it means it was very, very little. I mean, it was, didn't, wasn't much at all, okay? Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Now, notice... Did she actually give more as far as an amount goes? No, she gave more in proportion to what? What she had. She gave more percentage-wise. Does that make sense? So God's looking at what we give in relationship to percentages. It's not about how much you give. It's about how much you give in relationship to how much you have. And remember now, giving is an act of worship. And let, in this context, we're going to compare who actually had a greater level of devotion. Not that the other people, the rich people, didn't have devotion, but we're, seeing, we're going to see something about this widow woman. It says, So he called his disciples and said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance... But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying she gave everything. She put in her whole livelihood. So she gave her last two mites. That's what he's saying. So if we're thinking about the definition of worship, which one had a greater expression of worship? She did. It, was, it, it, it took a greater level of devotion, a greater level of respect and honor to give all versus much if you had abundance. He's not saying that the other people didn't give. He's not saying that they were wrong in what they were giving. But he is commending this widow woman who gives even though she has very little. Isn't that right? Now this, let me just say that this... There are many people who build cases not from the Scripture as to why they can't give. Well, we don't have very much. Neither did she. 
Isn't that right? Well, you know, we just don't have very much. Oh, oh, sorry. Remember we saw in Colossians 1 that Jesus is the head of the body and that he is to have preeminence. What's preeminence mean? First place. Is this woman putting Jesus or God in first place? She doesn't have very much, but yet she's still keeping God in first place. She's giving God the preeminence, which he deserves. Isn't that right? We also could say this. She was rich toward God, wasn't she? Amen. Unlike the man in the parable Jesus told, she had, who got all kinds of stuff and then gave nothing, wasn't rich toward God. He laid up treasure for himself and was a self-worshipper. And we know that one thing about this woman, she's not a self-worshipper. She's a worshiper of God. And she's doing it in her revealing her worship. She's revealing her devotion. She's revealing her respect for God in her giving. So don't allow yourself to make excuses as to why you can't give. Amen. You need to put God first, first. Always put God first. That's the right attitude to have. Isn't that right? You mean God would, you know, I don't have very much. Doesn't God know I don't have very much? Yeah, he does. Well, let's think about this. If all you had was two mites, would it be worth more to you as seed? Think about it. What could you buy for two mites? I mean, I don't know in that economy of that day, what really could you buy for two mites that would sustain you for any length of time? And yet if all you had was two mites, and you used it as seed, knowing that God would honor that seed and multiply that seed and cause it to come back to you in a multiplied form. Woo, glory to God. That, so those two mites actually were more valuable to her as seed rather than to buy something to meet her present need. Isn't that right? I mean, I think David's story and Amanda's story is powerful because you could see an, God can accelerate your harvest. I mean, he can accelerate your harvest just like that. They sowed a seed within two weeks, they received a harvest. Would I say that's normal? I wouldn't say that's normal, but I'm saying God can do anything. Amen. But the fact that She's, understand now, she's putting a, really, she's placing a demand on God. Isn't that right? She's placing a demand on God. Letting go of everything she has, placing a demand on God. She's got an extreme level of trust. She's got an extreme act of worship. Isn't that good? Yes. Amen. This little woman ought to challenge us. Isn't that right? Oh, Yeah. And you can see here, Jesus is, uh, he makes reference to the ones who gave that were rich, but he's really commending the woman. Isn't that right? He's, he's, he's saying, boys, come over here. Let me explain to, what, to, to you what this, what this widow woman did. He, he's commending her. And some, remember now, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. If Jesus didn't want her to give, didn't, didn't, we can tell Jesus knew she didn't have anything. She gave everything, right? I mean, he could have gone over to her and said, woman, what are you doing? All you got is two mites. What are you doing with the, you ought to go buy yourself some food. He could have said that. He's sitting there watching. He's God, right? right? But he doesn't. He commends her for giving everything she has. Wow, that begins to challenge our mindsets, doesn't it? Amen. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings 17 and look at another widow in the scriptures. 1 Kings chapter 17. Pick it up with verse 1. 
1 Kings 17, 1. I want to read the whole story. I say the whole story or most of it. 1 Kings 17, verse 1, it says, And Elijah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, who is the king, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, that being Elijah, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Ooh, glory to God. God commands ravens. Well, they, he's, remember now, he's Lord. He owns them. He, he created them. He created the ravens. Let me just say this concerning this. Anytime you're willing to obey God, he, has, he will use supernatural means to make sure your needs are supplied. Amen. Amen. Anytime that you're, you will obey God and do what God tells you, you can see here in this context that God will, he'll do supernatural things to make sure that your needs are taken care of. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So we went and did according to the word of the Lord. That's wise, isn't it? To do according to the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's do what he says. For, the, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, and that flows into the Jordan. Notice in verse 6, the ravens brought to him bread and, and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Birds brought him food and bread, meat and bread. Not just one thing. He had it, he had it going on there. Isn't that good? But again, I just reemphasize, when you obey God, you can stand in faith that God will meet your needs by supernatural means. Whatever he has to do, he'll get it done. He'll make sure that you're taken care of. Verse 7 says, And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So God gave him the word to go to the brook, which he obeyed. God showed himself faithful, sent ravens, got what he needed. God sustained him there with bread and meat in the morning and in the evening by ravens. You know he can be confident that when he's commanded the widow woman, it's going to be just the way it was with the ravens. So he's obeying the word of the Lord. Arise, go to Zarephath, belongs, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup and I, that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And so she said, As the Lord God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. So she is in a very dire place, isn't that right? Uh, she's saying, I only have a, enough to make for my son and I, uh, just a little bit of cake, that's it. We're going to eat that, and then after we eat that, there's nothing left. She's anticipating death for her. She has... Remember now, she's a widow. She has no way to uh, receive income uh, in that culture. Uh, she's in a bad place, obviously. But I want you to notice in verse 13 what Elijah says to her. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as I have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Oh, yeah. First. Now, that, now understand... This is giving God preeminence. 
putting God first place. This is, this is God's servant, and as you treat the servant, it's just that it's you, you're treating God the same way. Isn't that right? Amen. You disrespect the servant, you disrespect God. Isn't that right? Amen. And so he says, make me a little cake first. Now understand, that cake is her what? Seed. That cake is her seed. It's all she's got. It's all, it, listen, all she's got right there. And, and God's saying, you make me some first. Woo! It takes faith. Isn't that right? You're going to have to trust the word of the Lord. You're going to have to trust. And what that really is for her is seed. Now, if she's willing to, if she's willing, now she can eat, just like the, the widow with the two mites, she can either look at that and say, well, I could buy, you know, a little piece of bread, and once I buy that, I'm out of money, and I'll probably die. But understand, the two mites was more valuable to her as seed. Let's ask ourselves the same thing. The, is this little meal that she has, is it more valuable to her as seed rather than to meet her current need? It's more valuable as what? Seed. So, so there may be some people in here today that you don't have very much. And what little bit you have, you've been holding to yourself. And God is wanting you to be rich towards him. And he's wanting you to step out by faith and take what you currently have and consider it as seed because it's more valuable to you as seed. Amen. Amen. Your seed has the potential to change your future. If you just, if she just eats the meal, all it has to do is, has the ability to do is change her present. Isn't that right? But if she's willing to treat it as a seed, it has a, the a capacity to change her future. Amen. Really, that's what seed does. Seed changes my future. If you don't like your present, if you don't like what, what's going on presently, the only thing that can change your future is seed. I'm talking about natural means. And we all could take a lesson from that. I, I need to be challenged with that. Looking at my current state, if there's anything that I don't like about my current financial state, and I'm not saying that there aren't other things involved, good stewardship, but I'm saying, obviously, we begin with seed. Seed has the capacity to change my future. And you either, you either have to take God at his word or trust yourself. Come on. You trust yourself. Build your case. Right? We know how that we already all know how that works out, right? Trust in yourself. Let's ask ourselves if she trusts herself, what is she going to get? Exactly what she what, exactly what she said. I'm going to eat this meal. Me and my boy are going to eat. We're going to die. That's it. Come be over. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as I have said. Really, he's not speaking for himself. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me. And afterwards make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. The bin of flour shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry. Until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. Amen. There's the promise. Now she has something actually to wrap her faith, faith around. Isn't that right? She has something to trust. 
the word of the Lord. Listen, we got, we got something to trust right here. The word of the Lord. Amen. God's no respecter of persons. What he'd do for that widow woman, he'd do for you. And though we don't know all the, the rest of the story for the woman with the two mites, I would, I would bet my money on it that her needs were no, taken care of. Isn't that good? So the Lord said, that bin of flour won't be used up, nor the jar of oil would run, die, run dry till the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. Now, I've taught on this before, and in my mind, I, I used to picture that once she obeyed the Lord, that all of a sudden that the, the bin of flour all of a sudden became full. But that's not what the Bible says. That actually, in my mind, now I see it as the same amount of ma remained in it all the time. That every, every time she dipped in to take more out, the same remained. Which, listen, which is you, you would have to continue to walk by faith every day. Isn't that right? You dip in, and it, listen, it didn't change. Versus the, the, the bin of, the barrel of flour all of a sudden became full, and you went, oh, glory to God. No, but every day you look at it, you dip in, and it just the same amount. But it never changed, day in and day out. And we need to understand that this, uh, this drought lasted for, I think it was like three, three years. <laughs> now, I'm not sure the time once the, I don't know how long it took for the brook, brook to dry up once the drought started. I, I don't know how long that took. But it's potentially could be could be a, a couple of years. Who knows? We're just guessing. But it wasn't no short period of time that they that that bin of flour and that oil remained. It goes on to say, so she went away and did according to the word of the Lord, the word of Elijah. Excuse me, and she and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. Notice this according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. God's very legalistic. If you're willing to trust him, if you're willing to do what God's word says, if you're willing to be rich towards God, if you're willing to be seed-minded rather than need-minded, if you, 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 listen, your seed is the thing that can change your future. My seed is the thing that can change my future. Amen. Amen. And we can stand in faith for that. And what God would do for the little widow woman here, or this, woman, little, this widow woman, he'd do for, for any of us. Anyone who will take him at his word and do what his word says, he will make sure that the results are as exactly as he says. He who sows sparingly, will also reap sparingly. Listen, he, he's saying, you can count on it. You sow little, you get little. And David make, made reference to it, to it the last Wednesday night. You know, if you had 100 acres and you only planted one out of the 100, you're only going to get a one-acre harvest. It's true. Amen. But God's very legalistic in that sense, and I'm very glad that he is, that he plans on abiding by his word. And the challenge for God is, let me just say this. You've heard me say it before. The challenge for God is, is getting people to believe him, getting people to just trust him, to just simply take him at his word. Nothing else. No, not, not anything else. Just, just his word. Just taking him at his word. And then acting on what he says. Everything in the natural, let me just say, we would say this. There's no doubt that everything in the natural for this woman is screaming at her, don't do it. Don't do it. Those are just words. That's a meal, right? 
Her stomach was probably hungry. She was, no doubt said, I'm going to go cook this food. She's hungry. Everything within her is no doubt screaming out, don't be a fool. Don't listen to that goofy prophet. <laughs> right? All the devil would just be screaming. Uh, even as, you know, as we teach on oftentimes on giving in here, you know, the devil's there, he's whispering in your ear, oh, don't be a fool. Don't buy into that stuff. You know, that's hocus pocus or whatever. No, it's the word of God. We're not teaching you our, our ideas. We're teaching you what the Bible says. Amen. So there's no doubt that there's times that you're going to be under pressure not to do what God's word says. I would say to you, don't listen. Don't listen to your feelings. Don't listen to your emotions. Don't listen to the devil. Do exactly what God has said to do. And it's then we can stand in faith for the promise to be manifest. God made her a promise, and he held good to it. Amen. And the same promise is available to us that if we would sow, we shall also reap. That there is a fruit that abounds to our account when we're willing to take partnership with God and his work in the earth. Whatever that looks like here at New Beginnings Church or other ministries all around the world, there's a lot of people doing the work of God in the earth. Amen? We're thankful for your partnership with us here at New Beginnings Church, and we do seek the fruit that abounds to your account. We're standing in faith with you for your harvest. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we do thank you again for your word today. It's been a pleasure to feed upon your word. Thank you, Father, that... I pray that these words today would challenge. There may be somebody today who has been on the edge of all this. I pray that those who have been on the edge, we have many that are already doing it. They're already acting by faith. I pray that those who are just observing will now become partakers, that they will be people who begin to give. And it doesn't matter how little you give. It's about obeying what the Word of God says. Even if you have little, just obey. You may be consider yourself like the widow woman with two mites. Obey God and trust Him. And you'll see the promise manifest to you that you will receive a harvest. And so, Daddy, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for your words. Father, they've been sown in our hearts, Father. I pray that they would that we would ever be mindful of them. We lay claim to your word that says that your Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance all things that you've said to us. We just lay claim to this now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, Mary Margaret. Let me get you a mic because I don't think everybody can hear you. That's all right. Let me get you a mic. There you go. Thank you. And I had asked Pastor for counsel on whether I should continue with the case. It's already cost me $4,000 in legal fees. And we don't have it. We've had to charge those legal fees on a charge card. And I was questioning whether with the bill from the lawyer for another 1000 if I should just back out. So I laid a fleece before the Lord. I listened to your counsel. But there was still something nagging at me. So I laid a fleece before the Lord. And I said, God, <clears throat> I need a brick. <laughs> let it land to know whether I should continue or not. And at the same time, I asked him to help provide that $1,000. Well, we have taken pastor's teaching this last five weeks or so seriously, and we're using it in every area of our life. But we thought we were giving generously in our tithe, but we looked at that, and actually, we weren't hitting 
even. So we increased by $200 and um, we were okay with it. We wanted to do, we were being legalistic. We wanted to do exactly what we know God asked. So here I have these two requests. And I got another letter from my lawyer and it looked like a repeat of the bill, probably 30 days late. <laughs> But on it, it said I had received a grant from a trust that the law, uh, the legal office has. So that answered two. I got reimbursed for what we would have to pay the lawyer. And I believe our looking at our tithe was definitely that. But I also got in answer to my fleece, so I will continue with this. Um, <clears throat> and my counselor says it will be closure of much that's gone on for the last 19 years. <laughs> so I can't tell you how much I believe in listening to this. It, it's hit me in every area of my life. I've gone through every closet I have. Anything excess is gone, given to people. And um, we've done it with furniture. We've done it with other things. Because what I lost a few years ago, my entire household had been replaced, but abundantly. And so we were able to give furniture away, too. So I just testify with all my heart, all my heart, believe. Believe what pastor's sharing from the word of God. And our need was supplied. We didn't connect it, the 200 to the 1,000, until much later. Amen. But it was all this week. And That's I, awesome. I just... And that took a step of faith, right? It, you, oh. you, you got to look at <laughs> yes. your, your numbers, and, and you said, yes. we've been falling short of the tithe. We need to come up $200. You made that adjustment, and boom. Yes. You know, had a favorable outcome of a, of a $1,000. Is that right? Oh, it wiped out. $1,000 bill that we have, and also answered the fleece whether I should continue. Right. I had put that out, and so we will. And as my counselor says, on March 26th, I'll have closure. Awesome. Which is, and you won't have to spend another dime, is that what you're saying? No. And hopefully, I won't have to see my ex-husband again until yeah. heaven. <laughs> and <laughs> it won't matter then. <laughs> so, uh, the word of God is true. Amen. And, you know, I tell Pastor, he's my hummingbird, because I've been in church my entire life. I've fallen uh, by the wayside a few times, but I have had much teaching, and it's been up here. And Pastor Paul's been my hummingbird, and he went up here, and he pulled it, and it's all down here in my heart now. And um, your prayer before beginning today was, if we believe things that aren't true, that he would help us to. Yeah. Weed them Get out. Get free from that. And Lies. that's what's happened in the almost five years I've been right. here. And I'm 69, so don't you ever give up hope that it will make sense <laughs> to you. Amen. But I love you all. I love my church. I love my pastor. Most of all, I love my God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, don't forget Wednesday night is our grow night. Uh, David will be finishing up this week teaching on the subject. Well, you, you, are you all done with the subject of, or are you just going to be led by the Spirit of God? Just show up this Wednesday night and uh, we'll uh, see what God does. Uh, I'll be picking it up the week after and I'm going to be teaching on faith in God's faithfulness. So that's going to be the subject I'll be dealing with. Faith in God's faithfulness.